The time having arrived, I called the meeting of the school committee to order for today, Tuesday, November 12, 2019. Please stand and help us salute our beautiful flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to uh, thank uh, the members and also the guests that we have in the audience. We can't see them because of the nice uh, shiny light right in the old eyes, but I'm, I'm glad you guys are all here and thank you for coming. Uh, do we, we don't have any visitors, do we? Okay. Uh, not having any visitors, we'll move right along to the consent agenda. Is there any items that you'd like to take out of Uter? Mr. Gomle. C, I'd like to take out. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Opposed? Anything else? No? Nope. Uh, I would like to entertain a, a motion to take uh, <coughs> the consent agenda items minus C in order. Could I please have uh, a motion? Motion Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? So moved. Communications, anything we want to communicate? Go right ahead, sir. <laughs> uh, so agenda item C is regarding a, an eighth grade trip that South Middle School is uh, hoping to take or proposing to take uh, to New York City. And Mr. Bonham, who is the eighth grade teacher who is um, leading this, is here tonight. And I'd like to thank him for coming and thank him for putting this together and thank Mr. Duart for being here as well. Um, I know that the PLUF and um, there's another school too, the middle school that's done this, but the PLUF always has a big trip and it's a great experience for our kids to leave the state and uh, I know for me actually as a teacher doing this trip was the first time I ever went to New York City was with my students. Um, so it's a great opportunity to take kids somewhere they haven't been and uh, experiential learning is a great form of uh, education that I wish that we would be able to do more. Hopefully with our, our uh, pending legislation, we'll be able to budget more money for field trips because it's a huge part of um, the uh, experience that we've been lacking. So I'd like to thank Mr. Bonham for doing that. I know one eighth grader was very excited about it when I asked her, so um, it should be a great trip. Thank you. Thank you, sir. A motion to approve that agenda item C. Go right ahead, Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Duart here. Yes, we can have both. Come on up to the table. Answer any questions. Come on down. The water is just fine. I tried. <laughs> Thank you for coming tonight. We appreciate it. I didn't mean to drag you all the way down. I just wanted to ask if the, the kids could send postcards. When the Plough School did it uh, last year, they sent us all postcards from everywhere they went. It was beautiful to get them. Sure. Could they do we'll, that? Yeah. Maybe something like that. We'll be sure to do that. Okay. That's all I wanted to ask. I didn't mean to drag <laughs> you all the way And we'll be sure to document the trip as they go throughout the various stops and learn. And um, we'll document all of it on our website and at the school. So. Yeah, the postcard, they were written, handwritten and they said, Absolutely. The hell, what a nice time they're having. It, it was just a, a real nice, it was like I was there. To Fine. read the postcards. We'll do that. We'll be happy to. Thank you. That's all I am. You're really into these postcards. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Anyone else has uh, any question, uh, Mr. Minichel? Thank you, the staff, for volunteering to do this. Obviously, it takes a lot of time away from you know your your own family. Um, like um, Mr. Gormley said, the the Pluff has been doing this, and I think the kids are really going to enjoy it. Um, it's so much fun, you know, going on a class trip just for a field trip, but I mean, going overnight to New York City, it, it's incredible. I mean, the first time I drove to New York City and, and saw the skyline, it's like, holy mackerel, now I know what they mean by the Big Apple. I mean, it's like 10 times Boston at least. It's just incredible. So to me, it really is breathtaking when you first say to yourself, God, how is this place organized? How do they do things here? It's so insanely big and, but, the kids are going to love it. Um, do you guys, uh, is one of the chaperones, you know, a nurse? Are you going to take a nurse with you? Or? 
Um, we can. I mean, I haven't talked to him, but we can. Have Might be a good time. idea. Sometimes it's nice to have a nurse on the trip, on a trip like that, especially if some kids have to take medications or, God forbid, something happens. You never know. It's, it's never a bad thing to have one of your chaperones, a nurse. Right. Just, I would just keep that in the back of your mind. Right, sure. We'll work with Linda Cahill and ask her. In the, in right. How many students, total students end up going on the trip? <laughs> 50s and the right now the 50? plan's 50, but 50? we can add to it if you need. Great. Yeah. Are you going to go by one bus or a couple buses? Or? Uh, right now it's one, but if it gets more, we can add a second one. Okay. We'll have so fun. It's our first try, so hopefully we'll get to no, 50, and good. then we'll <laughs> increase it if we need to. Yeah. It's a great experience. Uh, yeah. Mr. Beth. It's not a school bus you're renting, is it? Please tell me. Oh, no. No, 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 no. It's, it's a coach bus. Get, get, get a bigger bus with the video the coach. screens in there and show them a video down and back, because I've done that right. trip many times before with college students. Yeah. And so you've got to keep them occupied. Sometimes they're, they're worse than uh, the middle school students. Yeah. So, but, uh, uh, so that's, uh, that's my only question. And, of course, a bathroom, you know, that's all important. Oh, yeah. Bathroom is very important. <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you, sirs. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, having no further communications at this time, I'm going to turn the meeting over to our superintendent. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first, I want to bring up our student representative. She wasn't with us last time because her and Georgina are going to alternate. So Cheyenne, you can come up to the table. Cheyenne Jackson is the uh, senior. What's that? Oh, you have to vote. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You, can, you can sit. Go ahead, sit while they make a motion to vote. I thought we did vote. No, because uh, I motioned and then Tim won. I didn't vote. Right. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, let me play the tape back. Uh, <laughs> motion has been properly made and properly second. All those in favor accepting. All those opposed, so moved. Awesome. All, All right. right. Cheyenne, thank you for coming. Cheyenne Jackson is a senior. She's our other school committee um, student representative. She's a member of JRTC Peer Mediation. She plays varsity tennis. She also takes part in a senior seminar. She's in the Nursing 3 program, and she is enlisted into the National Guard. So we thank you. It's, she, yeah, she's a very impressive student, very impressive young lady. We appreciate you being here. Um, I don't know if there's much of an update for BHS, but I want you to just make sure you say hello to everybody. And <laughs> hello, everybody. I'm Cheyenne. It's nice to be here. This is my first meeting, so it's a little scary, <laughs> but um, I plan on showing my face a lot more. Um, currently, at Brockton High, there's nothing going on, you know, just students doing their thing. Currently, we did have our Veterans Day parade for our JRTC. It was very beautiful. The drill was gorgeous. Um, and it was down uh, Belmont Street, and that's about it <laughs> for Brockton High. <laughs> well, we. What uh, What are you going to do with the National Guard? Do you join the National Guard? Uh, Correct. So, yes. what is your sort of, as they used to say, with the MOS? Um, my MOS is fifty. I'm um, sorry, fifteen Papa, which is the intro into aviation. Okay. I want. I really want to um, become a. Mm, I want to become a flight medic one day. And I'm willing to do all the steps to get there. And I know the military isn't a joke, and it's nothing like JROTC, but I want to push myself and have that discipline and achieve my goal one day. But JROTC will uh, get you prepared for that. Both yes. my boys and my daughter-in-law graduated from Broughton JROTC, and they're presently serving in the Army now, so, and uh, two in the National Guard. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was, I was wondering uh, what you were going to do. So maybe one day you'd run into one of my sons. So <laughs> if you do, if, if you happen to, name is Bath, if you happen to run into him, tell her that you are JROTC <laughs> and you'll get very special treatment. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your service, by the way. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Shannon. Oh, we welcome. appreciate you. Happy to have you with us. Yes. Thank you. Next, I want to bring up. Um, BA President Kim Gibson and uh, teacher Doreen Pinkham. I want to, they're going to come up and speak to us a few minutes about the new district design team. Um, this was uh, the district design team. Um, actually, I came up with. Uh, it's based off of the restructuring committee that we had at Brockton High for several years. Um, I was a member of that committee along with Sharon Wolder and some others here um, from 2000. 2000 to 2010. Um, it was when MCAS first came out. 
um, and Brockton High was really struggling with MCAS scores, so Dr. Zachwitz put together the restructuring committee, which was made up of uh, teachers and administrators from all uh, content areas, and it helped drive instruction and drive the professional development activities at Brockton High. So coming into this position um, with seven schools in turnaround, now we have three more going into turnaround, I really thought it was important to put together a di district design team. It's made up of 30 members. Every school is represented. Every subject area is represented. And the idea is to focus the district on our professional development opportunities we have for teachers and also make sure there's clear messages going out to all the schools of what our goals are. This year we're focused on um, where our students are struggling. So the last two meetings we have gone over MCAS data and really looked at um, where our students are really struggling with qu um, the questions in math and, and also in English. Uh, we're going to design, design professional development opportunities off of those areas where our students are struggling. Um, so we're building that now. We're going to do a district-wide initiative coming up between um, February vacation and um, April vacation to really um, focus the district and the kids on strategies that they could use uh, that would help them not only with MCAS testing but also with their learning in general. So I'll let um, two of my members, my co-chair, I'm, I'm a co-chair along with Doreen uh, who teaches at North in the intervention program and was at the Davis for a very long time and obviously it's very important to have our union partner with us, uh, Kim Gibson is also on that team. So they, so th the three of us are um, there's 27 others of us. So again, it's made up of administrators and also teachers from across the district. So good evening. First of all, Mike did most of the talking that we were going to do, <laughs> even you, though Mike. he asked us to prepare. So <laughs> thank you, Mike. Thank you make you. this very easy. <laughs> so as Mike said, um, our group is made of about 30 of us. And um, one of the parts that's really key is that every level is represented. There's somebody from every building. There's all different levels of administration rep represented, different positions within the district. Um, and a key thing is that both of them do chair the um, committee together. So it's not run by the superintendent. It's just Mike Thomas, to be honest with you. So during the time that we're together, there are no labels for any of us. It's not like I'm the president. We're, we're all part of the team. So every teacher is encouraged to speak up, um, give their input. One thing that we um, push ourselves on is if we disagree with something, you have to have a solution. You can't just be there to say no to things. You need to be part of the solution. Um, a job that had gone out back in, I think it was June, prior to Mike taking over officially, and everyone had an opportunity to apply to be part of this committee, so it's a great representation. Um, one of the things that I think is great to see is that it's a very active group. They all participate. No one is afraid to speak up. They share their viewpoints. Um, I think as we get further into wh what we're doing, it'll be great to see our um, district take more of a focus and really pay attention to what our professional development is to really um, respond to those sh struggling learners. So part of this, as Mike said, is to look at those children who are struggling within the district and how we support them. So we're looking at MCAS data, we're coming up with strategies for that, and the goal is to have something available by April as a district as a whole. I would just add to that, when we think about um, all the talent uh, that we have as teachers and administrators, we're using our own resources to um, find solutions to what we need to work on, and everybody's been getting along, which is good. So far, we have, a, we have twice meetings twice a month. We've done Saturdays so far. Um, so, you know, the group is very dedicated. It's not something that we take lightly, um, and attendance is a requirement. So once, you know, we set the calendar already so everyone has those dates. Um, but so far, it's a, it's a great group to work with. Very exciting, as I said, um, to see us focus. And our first meeting started off with Sue Zackwitz coming back and training us. Um, I think the key things are, as she said, that we are the think tank, we are the communicators for the district, and we are the problem solvers. And everyone has taken that to heart. So uh, Sue entertained us for a couple of hours on our first meeting, <laughs> I can say, <laughs> um, and, and got us focused. So it's, it's been great so far. So I want to thank you know Superintendent Thomas for actually putting the group together. Um, I think that's one of the things that's exciting is the district, the buildings are talking about it. Um, at Rep Council, we discuss it. And they're just excited to, to be part of the um, solution. current tone or mood 
of the staff in the buildings this year compared to you know the last few years? Um, I would say they're very positive this year. Um, I think seeing the number of staff members that were added back, not only teachers but also the support staff, has been a huge morale booster. Um, they know that you know the Superintendent Thomas has basically asked us all to focus on working hard and being kind to one another. So it's great to see that positivity in the buildings from administration down to the teachers and other positions. Um, but a huge shift in morale this year with all the additional positions we were able to retain and add to our district. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm sure we'll be back with yeah, you. Yeah, we'll be once we start getting deep into the work and we come up with the initiatives, I'll actually invite all members to come uh, and we'll actually present um, what the initiatives are and, and make sure you all have that sometime, you know, pretty much probably right around Feb right before February vacation. So next I want to invite up Dr. Heather Ronan. I think she's here. She's going to, she was working <laughs> earlier very hard on getting the PowerPoint ready. She's going to talk about the STEM week we had two weeks ago across the district, which she did a great job planning with uh, June Sabre McGuire. Uh, I was a judge, was able to go to three schools uh, to, to judge uh, the STEM week activities. Uh, there was some great stuff going on. Students were making, it was focused off of football uh, and they were, yeah, that was the theme. So they were focused on, they were making goal posts um, out of marshmallows uh, and it was um, in Popsicle 6 and so many other things that they were working on for, uh, for STEM. It was a great project because the kids, not only was it hands-on, the kids learned so much. So I'm going to let Dr. Ronan take it from here. Yeah, we have to move out of the way, right? I got to hit the that the technology is not working for the STEM contests, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, it was working on the version I have, so please bear with me. We tried to get it work, working. Pushell and I tried to, videos are moving around, sound is a little crazy, but hopefully you'll get the gist of, um, of our day um, through the pictures of the kids. I'm going to put it on low because it doesn't seem to go off like it does in my office. <laughs> Yes, I am the one that you've been listening, and now it's in your head, so you don't even need it on because you just play it in your own head. <laughs> um, so, Deron Hammond, and unfortunately, this was one of the videos that's not working um, correctly on the slideshow. But um, Mary Beth O'Brien, um, if you know her, you know how competitive she is, and um, she actually had a little inspiration for the Gilmore students. Um, from Deron Hammond from the New England Patriots, um, say a little, see he turns. And, and we, I'm sorry we can't h hear him, but he does tell them to, uh, good luck with their STEM project and um, have a great you know, afternoon full of fun, fun activities with the kids. That's pre-K. This is one of the STEM activities where in first grade they were testing different materials for um, helmet safety and the egg was the brain. <laughs> There's some math. They measured themselves and then they put it down the hallway here at the Iron Own to see how tall the first grade, the kindergartners were. So that is a helmet that they designed, and they are putting a bocce ball to test the 
test to see the durability of their helmet. And underneath that is brain matter <laughs> or toothpaste in a little uh, straw. And um, so you could see, the students could see how important, if their brain is in underneath this helmet, how easily it is to, um, the impact it can be really great. And so they got to see that firsthand. So then they built um, the helmet stronger and stronger based on that. Design process. The kids really got into the day. The Kennedys, Jake Hackett took out the football sled. They were actually throwing their helmets and brains off the wall. <laughs> Three points. I got this to work. This is our own, one of our judges, Mr. Snellgrove, going for the field goal. No, he didn't make it. That's the STEM coach. Lombardi Trophy. We had just about every school with almost 100%. And who looks better? <laughs> just saying. Superintendent Thomas. <laughs> All through the schools, though, you could see students gathering data. They, put, they were putting plans in place before they got to the activity. They had to revise their plan if their, if their design did not, um, did not work, and they got the opportunity to improve it. So unfortunately, you're not going to be able to hear how excited these, these kids are. The Kennedy Cougars were the winners. They had literally just tried seven different types of materials when I walked in. <sighs> and the egg did not break. <laughs> They were very, very excited. So we did have a contest. We had um, many judges from all over the district that helped us out on the day. Uh, we're already making plans to improve the, the day for next year. Um, and it was a very tough um, judging, I have to say, that, that number one, when you see that many students so engaged, um, they could tell you what they were learning. They could tell you why they were learning it. And then someone had to say, but we can only have one winner. So we did have a, our, our judges all got together and we really did talk about the quality of the projects and, um, and the participation and the enthusiasm and the knowledge of the students. And um, the winners, this is for our second annual STEM, cost, STEM contest, are the Kennedy Cougars. And they're here today, Brian and Jamie are here. Milmo is one of our STEM coaches. Um, this event cannot go on without the support of the principals and the organization of the, of the STEM coaches. It really and truly 
Um, it's a great day, but there's a lot of work <laughs> behind the scenes. And um, they did such an amazing job. It was organized. It was impressive. Um, we had lots of people coming from the district to come and see them, and they couldn't believe what the students could articulate and what they could, um, what the teachers have put together and how creative they were. So it was, it was excellent. Sure. The brief comment we'd like to make is that STEM just equals excitement. It was wonderful to see how each and every student and every class and every teacher throughout the building were just uh, so excited. And thank you to Heather for her hard work and leadership throughout the district. And we can't do it without our uh, STEM coaches in our building uh, helping to motivate the teachers and the students with it. So there will be lots of uh, squeals of delight <laughs> tomorrow at 900 Ash Street. Yep. And uh, we'll certainly have to have the trophy go around just like the Stanley Cup to spend a day in every classroom <laughs> to be able to enjoy it. So thank you very much for your support. And thank you. And thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And hopefully someday soon that song will be out of your head. <laughs> thank you. I've been working with um, a parents group that works with the superintendent, um, and we've been talking a lot about um, opening up a community center at night um, for volunteers to help kids. Um, and I also would probably have some teachers involved once we get moving. So we're looking at North Middle School, as we know, as we're going to be closing that for renovation. It's very important that we keep that building viable and active. So uh, a lot of the parents have been very supportive about the idea of a community center um, that would be open Monday through Thursday from like 5 to 9 where people would volunteer their expertise, whether it's um, with tutoring, uh, helping parents um, navigate their way through the IEP process, helping parents um, that have uh, students going to college, helping them with their you know, applications, college applications, how to find uh, scholarships. So this is in the very early stages. So when we get to items to refer to um, subcommittee, I'd like to refer it to the facilities subcommittee so I could explain more about it. Then um, I have another meeting with the parents this Thursday. Um, right now, we, there are 20 classrooms at North that are not being used because uh, we only have the eighth grade there. So we're looking to use, have each volunteer group would open one of those classrooms and basically have an activity for parents and students. Parents would have to come with the students. Students could not be dropped off by themselves. And again, this is in the very early stages, um, but I wanted to make sure the school committee knew that I was working on it. Um, people are really excited about it. I listened to parents came last year to the meeting and you know, and they, you know, they would say, you know, at night, I'm home, I don't know how to help my son or daughter with their homework, um, and if we can maybe house the community center a few nights a week with um, some Brockton teachers, um, and again, this can be supported through community schools. Most of the work by parents would be volunteer, um, then we'd look to supplement with some teachers there, um, obviously to be paid to, as tutors, and we could come up with a calendar that you know, on these nights you'll have help with math and English and science. Uh, these nights you can go and you can have, uh, get help with how to navigate through the college application process or how to, you know, how to fill out applications for student loans and uh, all the scholarships that are available for our kids that we don't really you know, help our you know, kids navigate with and a lot of that money goes unspent. Um, so again, this is very early. Um, we're open to any parents joining us. Uh, I have groups of parents. I have um, different community groups looking to uh, that are interested. Again, everybody would have to be quarried and approved by HR department. And I think it would really be a good thing for the community. Um, we also have the auditorium there. We could. Uh, I'm also talking to like a Nancy Lieberg to come in and do, you know, the Not My Kid presentation. So we could do different presentations each night for parents, um, that could be really helpful. Almost you know, like an all-encompassing community center that really brings people together, has parents helping other parents, 
working together um, that understand the struggles. Um, I've been clear with meeting with my parents that just, just this cannot just be a school department led initiative. It has to be led uh, and supported by the, uh, the school department, but led by the parents. And again, they've been great because I think it would really make people comfortable about coming to the community center because they know they're going to meet other parents that are having the same struggles, talk about social media issues, how to you know, work, through, work through difficult conversations with, with their kids about social media and bullying. And you know, so this is, again, in the early stages, but I wanted to make sure you were aware of uh, the, the planning and moving forward. I'd like to see something like this and try to get it open shortly after the holidays. Into the new into the new calendar year. I just like to say I think it's a great idea that number one you're taking a school that's about to close or renovate and doing something with it because as you know you got to pay for the lights and the heat anyway no matter what yep. whether it's open or closed so why not use it exactly it's a it, I think it's a real good idea and you, you don't want an abandoned building no. on that street no. Not at all. We, obviously, we we know that the we should know by the middle of December whether we're we're accepted by the MSBA into yep. the renovation project. But they they were clear with uh, when Mr. Sullivan and I met with them um, a couple weeks ago that the plan and process could be at least two years before they actually swing the first hammer. So we don't want an empty building just sitting there right. uh, as the the architects are moving in and out during the day and and planning and testing and making sure they you know, understand what they need to do to the building. But it would be great to have, again, the buildings open. Um, and used. And used, yeah. and it's viable for the, um, and I think it's gotta be um, a lot of different uh, communities coming together. Um, yeah. There'd be translators there for parents. Um, there'd be every, as many community groups as we get working together to come together and, and have their own space to share ideas and support our parents and, and our students. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think it's a wonderful idea. Thank you. Uh, we've, we've had a lot of parents um, always ask for help, whether it's helping their children with homework or, or we just went through this, you know, resources, you got a child going to college, the whole process there. So that's wonderful to have, you know, a place where a lot of the families can have resources they can turn to. Plus, it gets you know other students familiar with other students in our district. Um, you know, sometimes parents just want to see what other families are going through. So, it, it, it's going to be wonderful, absolutely yeah. wonderful. I do love that idea. Um, you know, every family's going through different things, whether it's school or issues with their children. Having Officer um, Leadberg there is, is going to be a great um, help for some of the families uh, if they're experiencing different issues that they're going through. So um, that's definitely a positive. Yeah. I know a lot of the families have been looking for this for quite some time, so um, I'm glad that we're going to have that. So thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, um, I know you mentioned uh, the college, entering into college and helping with that. Um, at the conference that I was at in MASC, I'm going to report out later on to you guys. Uh, I picked up two documents, two books published by the MASC that, that directly targets what you were talking about college strategy plans and early entry into college. So I, I didn't bring them with me tonight, but I'm gonna drop them off to you at Central. I'll leave them with Melinda uh, this week so that you can take a look at it. It completely outlines uh, everything that you need to know about helping parents struggle through this, you yeah. know, especially when they're looking for financial aid yeah. and anybody who's ever filled out those financial aid forms. I mean, that's the worst thing. Yeah. That's worse than a root canal, that thing. Uh, it's just ridiculous. But this gives you an opportunity to take a look at what MASC is also put together to help school districts. So it was uh, it was really good. So yeah, that's great. So I'll drop those off. Oh, to you. perfect. I, I was going to bring them tonight, but I didn't. So so I, I mean, I think that's, I, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Tom just reminded me, and there's a little skull and crossbones next to FAFSA. <laughs> so. Oh. We did two ago. <laughs> yeah. Every year. <laughs> and and the worst part about that, they make you jump through hoops, and then they don't give you any money. Yeah. Every year. Wow. So, but I'll drop those off. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Minichel. Thank you very much for um, mentioning about uh, there's people there for translators. 
Yes. So that's great because I mean, you know, the parents that um, you know find it a little difficult because of you know the language issue, you know, need to be able to come and participate right. too because we have such a large population of people that um, are part of this community and we yep. want them to be part of this community. Um, so that's a great thing. Um, with the weather we're having outside, I think that it's nice to be able to have you know, a gym available yeah. to some of the older kids, the older groups. I mean, yeah. whether it be indoor basketball or soccer or whatever it is, you know, I mean, so that would be nice to get some utilization out of that gymnasium with this crappy, exactly. cold, miserable weather coming. And, exactly. um, you know, maybe we could get word out to some of the different youth groups out there that they might be able to sign up for some time, keep a schedule so that the gym gets used because it's just a great resource. And if I was a kid back then, I'd lo I always loved to hang around in the gyms and the schools on a Saturday or even you know, after school, especially when you couldn't play in the neighborhoods because it was too crappy. So. Yeah, definitely it'd be great for the building to keep it active. Yeah. And it's just something that's important for the neighborhood uh, the community and I think it just would really help um, and again when parents are home really struggling and you know I do this myself with my daughter I look at the math homework and I'm like oh boy yeah <laughs> where can I go here at six o'clock at night and I don't know how to help with this so now I have some place I could I could call Mr. Minicello and have him help me out but yeah yeah um, sure but it's just something that again it, it's um you know, supported by the school department, but really run by the parents and the, and, the, and the volunteer organizations. I think that would really make it more comfortable for parents to come and, um, and take part in the different activities that we can offer. So I'll keep you posted and I'll, I'll refer to the facility subcommittee where we could have, you know, just about the use of the building and what people, you know, what we have to go through to make sure everything's documented and um, they were covered with everything. Excellent. So, um, and that is the end of the report of the superintendent of schools. Nice. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Very nice. I appreciate it. Mr. Mr. Sullivan. Right. Ask two. Just, <laughs> would that keep going even after? Yeah, we, uh, the parents have spoken about that, like after North Ashley does close for the renovation. Um, they, you know, where would we go after that? We're hoping that if this becomes successful, um, that we could get some now businesses to back us up and really support this community center, and then we could find another building in Brockton, or we might have to think about going to another school. Um, the good, you know, the, the best thing about the empty classrooms at North is that a, a community group, a volunteer group, can set up in that classroom and then they're not infringing on the teacher's classroom, that the teacher doesn't have to come back the next day and this thing's out of place and furniture moved around. Uh, it's basically the, the good thing about the empty classrooms that you know, it becomes theirs as the community member or the, or the volunteer group and then it, they don't have to worry about a teacher being in there and, you know, and, then, you know, and then messing up the teacher's room for the kids the next day. So um, that's the best part about, that's why with nice when we, we, when we can't be at North anymore, hopefully we could find another, another building. But at that time, if it's really successful, we get some businesses to back us up and we can find another building um, that's not a school maybe, and, um, but offers the different things that you know, we can offer the, you know, the parents. Could be the short term. Yeah, could possibly be, yeah. So, um, but thank you. But that is... Shah Sant. Yeah, the Shah Sant. <laughs> uh, anything else for the superintendent? Um, do we have any items that we want to refer to the subcommittees? If we can, I'll, well, and if we can work with this uh, facility subcommittee, um, that we can um, have a meeting with this facility subcommittee to discuss the uh, possible community center at North. And I also have another one. So I recently ha uh, received a letter from Detective Ernie Bell, uh, 1985 graduate, Brockton High School. He was a member of the champ last championship boys basketball team to win the state championship. Um, so Ernie sent me a letter um, asking, and it was signed by several other um, former players at Brockton High School basketball players. So 
they, um, he would like to have the uh, gymnasium floor at Brockton High named after Victor Ortiz. Um, Victor Ortiz um, was, worked for 31 years in the Brockton Public Schools. He was an adjustment and guidance counselor from 1976 to 2007. He was the junior varsity coach for the, the boys from 1976 to 1983. And then he was the men's varsity basketball coach from 1983 to 2007. Uh, he won the, the Massachusetts State Championship um, in 1985, the last time we won the championship, went to five South sectional titles, and over, overall he won 71% of the games he coached. So I actually played, me and Mr. Gormley played for Mr. Ortiz. Um, so yeah, I was a sophomore when they won the, the state championship on the JV team. So I need to refer this to the, um, the building naming subcommittee. And then Melinda could also get work with those members to schedule that. Uh, and then we would have Detective Bell and then other, others who have signed the letter would be um, able to come and speak on, on Victor's behalf. Victor still lives on Fern Ave in Brockton with his wife, Joanne. Uh, and um, he's actually doing, he's had some health issues over the years, but he's actually doing pretty well. So if we can refer that to the naming subcommittee. Oh, are you okay? All right. We're going to try for December 3rd before the school committee meeting on December 3rd. So, sh show work. Is that the next one? Yeah, that's the next one. Mr. Manager. Um, we will be scheduling another uh, superintendent's contract subcommittee meeting. Um, I'll check with everyone's availability. Um, and then I think that Mayor Rodriguez will, in a little while will elaborate a little more on that. Sure. <laughs> Anyone else? Well, I guess, uh, do we have any unfinished business that we want to bring up? Anything from the old days from a few days ago? No? I guess. I just wanted to mention yesterday at the Wrecking Parade. I was really, really impressed that the uh, the girl that sang the national anthem was from Brockton High. And as I was standing there, I said, wow, this is the, the best I've ever heard it sung. She was fabulous. I, I don't remember her name or anything. They said it. Anna Anise. But she was fabulous. She was spectacular. She was great. Uh, she could be at Fenway Park. Or yeah, Park she Park. was great. She was unbelievable. I think she's a sophomore. Wow. What, wow. Elise? Anise. Anise, A-N-N-E-S-E. -E. She was great. I know her dad and mom. Yeah, I've been giving Excellent. her singing lessons for a while now. That's why she did so well. <laughs> I thought I detected. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was great, and I thought uh, it made a lot of sense to, uh, to involve some young people from our community uh, in that particular parade, because I think... Uh, in the past, we've uh, had some recording uh, of, right. of the anthem itself, and we've got so much, again, we've got so much talent in this community that we could be showcasing out there. And sometimes we don't do a very good job in promoting our city, and I thought that it actually very nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was not a, our voice coach, by the way, but I wish I could sing like that. Anything else on that? No? Just on that note, Mr. Mayor, I was very impressed with your words at the veterans memorial in terms of the sacrifices that some of our veterans have made and I did not realize you were in the Navy so I learned something new yeah thank you for your service yeah I served six years from 83 to 89 actually eight years I got out in 91 but served from 83 to 89 with honor yep. you know proud to uh, serve this country yeah sure sure I also want to thank Dr. Murray um, and the Brockton High School JRITC and Vinnie Macrina for um, the Veterans Day Assembly that they put on uh, awesome. last Thursday, which is always one of the best. Um, they do an amazing job. Uh, the mayor was there was, as well and actually did a great job speaking um, in, in, in honor of our veterans, which, you know, we, it really was enjoyable. It was, we, a, it was, it was nice. a great ceremony as it always it is. Nice. Um, and I want to thank Dr. Murray and Mr. McCreena and the JROTC for putting it all together. The entire Army. Yep. They did a great well, job. Well, the entire Navy. <laughs> yeah, no. 
And I just want to mention that um, tomorrow night, uh, the mayor and his team have been working hard to celebrate the 125th birthday of, um, of Brockton and Brockton City Hall. So um, tomorrow night, we sent out a text message to all our parents is, um, from 4 to 5.30. Um, there's a free program decide, designed for children, uh, grades K, uh, K to 5. Um, and the mayor will be there to welcome them, and they're going to have all kinds of activities for, for students in uh, grades K to 5. So we sent that out as a text message tonight, and there's going to be sing-alongs and uh, a saxophone, um, and they're going to have a creative cake made by Montilio's. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. So Ooh, Can't wait to see that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's going to be a lot of activities for kids, so we hope that families take advantage of that. And, and there'll be a several other activities coming out about the 125th. Uh, birthday so the mayor is planning that he's been working hard with his team so we'll make sure that we announce these put them on our Facebook page put them all over social media and also continue to inform our parents through our you know our new text messaging system so parents know exactly when these things are taking place so we thank you for putting all that no, together thank you, thank you appreciate it shall I shall I go right into my little thing here Mr. Beth yeah I, I, I talked to Tom about on the MASC conference, yeah, please. so I will, then we can go into, because I, no, no, please. I, I think you're, you, what you have to say is best left for last, so we walk out of here feeling really good about it. Oh, yeah? Stuff. Yeah, I awesome. do. I do. Um, uh, I went to the MASC conference down in Hyannis and later, and I was joined uh, there by Mark and by Joyce, uh, and uh, I just want to give out uh, a little bit of a report on here and how important it is for us to attend the MASC conference each year. Um, I had the pleasure when I was on the school committee before of chairing Division Three, which covered all of southeastern Massachusetts, all the school districts in southeastern Massachusetts. And we were very well represented then. And some of the legislation that we got passed was the concussion protocols that we brought and worked in in, co in collaboration with Whitman and Children's Hospital when Children's Hospital gave us five dollars for a concussion protocol fee when everybody else was charging exorbitant prices and the other thing too that we were able to do in Division 3 was to work with uh, Bill Carpenter and myself and, the, and some of the other school committee members on the Recovery High School and we worked with North River Collaborative which came out of Division 3 as well so I think when the new school committee comes in, I think it is incumbent upon uh, uh, the members of this, this body to really get involved with MASC and Division Three to work on the, we're listed there, but when I, when I went to the meeting this time, it was, we were welcomed. Thank God Brockton's back. And I said, well, let's, let's hope that we can, we can do that. So uh, then the other thing was is, is that I attended several workshops and, there, and Michael, Michael came down uh, and we had lunch together and then you went to the workshop on busing if busing, I'm not mistaken. Busing, yeah, with Joyce yeah, and Mark. Yeah, with Joyce and Mark. Mm -hmm. So I went to the workshops that talked about collaboratives across the state to increase district capacity and it was really an eye-opening deal. So it really, uh, it, you know, if we get out there and we can share stuff, our capacity can grow. Um, and then I went to the recruiting of a more diversified educator workforce. Now, in conjunction with that, uh, I also, uh, Joyce and I went to listen to Dr. Derek Gay, who is one of the most famous consultants on diversity in this country and actually across and internationally. And if we think that we're doing things right in terms of diversity, think again, because we're not. And he actually, Joyce, you can chime in too, he actually took offense at the term diversity and diverse teachers. And he said, why, are you, why do you have to tell me that as a black man I'm a diverse teacher and you're going to make it better for me? So we need to really think about that. And one of the things that I came away with, and hopefully Joyce will agree with me, is, is that it wouldn't be a bad idea to get Dr. Derek Gray come here to give a seminar to the Brockton Public School System and talk about what diversity really means. 
because he said the biggest mistake we make is making it a black and white issue when it's not. Women are put into the diverse category. People with hearing that are hearing impaired or blind or have physical uh, disabilities are also included in this diverse. And we, we have a tendency to look, make that big mistake that he pointed out vehemently during the, actually he almost talked for two hours. So finally, uh, ever somebody said, we need to go to lunch. <laughs> so lunch always wins out, but I think it'd be very important for us to think about that. Then I went to another workshop, and it was entrepreneurship in the public schools, and it focused on transition programming for 18 to 22-year-olds. We forget about that. We forget about our 18 to 22-year-olds. And this was a real big eye-opener for me sitting there and thinking about it because one, in my career, once you guys were through with your students and they graduated from here, we got them at the university level. And I just want to go on the record as saying is that every time we get a Brockton High School student at LaSalle University, they, sh they shine. They were the cream of the crop. And I got to tell you, I, I worked with probably 25 Brockton High School students at LaSalle University, and they were absolutely amazing off the charts. Okay, so we're doing something right. Uh, and then I went to the delegate meeting, because you guys elected me to go and represent the school system at the delegate meeting. And I'm going to briefly just bear with me, because I think this is really important that we know about this. There were nine resolutions that MASC in conjunction with school committees from across Massachusetts got together and put on the, on the agenda here. And what was, uh, what was glaring to me is, is that every time somebody stood up and talked at the microphone, they said, we talked with our school committee about these resolutions. We need to be more active with the MASC with these resolutions. Now here is, uh, there were nine res I'm not going to read them, okay, because it'd take too long. But I will put together a mm -hmm. report and send it to Mike, and then you can share it with everybody. Uh, banning styr uh, polystyrene from schools, passed unanimously. Want to get the polystyrene out because it has effect on climate change and global warming and sustainability. So we had a long discussion about that. Resolution number two, pertaining to educator diversity and professional licensing. We, as a delegation, voted almost unanimously to do away with MTEL testing because we felt that, or that, that it was argued that, it was not a great indicator of what a person can do in the classroom. And so that has to, and, and so that's going on to the legislature and to DESE. But there was overwhelming response to that, which was great. Resolution number three was school trans, uh, transportation. And they want to refine, we voted to refine the bid process because we felt that the bidding process for school transportation was not competitive enough. So we are going, so the resolution was to petition DESE and the state to take some of those uh, draconian measures out of the bidding process so that we can entertain more competitiveness in the transportation bidding process. That actually met with no, <laughs> no opposition at all. That was just unanimously approved by everybody in there. And the uh, resolution number four, climate change, was also approved unanimously by everybody in the building. Uh, full funding of transportation costs for students in foster care and state care. And they wanted to, the, the city, they wanted the state not to just say suitable funding, they wanted complete funding for this, and that's what we voted on. And that met with no opposition. And I gotta tell you, there was 300 people, four, almost 400 people in the delegate meeting. And they were, all, every single school district was represented, so, and I, and I voted in favor of that as well. So I voted in favor of all of these motions. Okay, universal quality pre-kindergarten access in Massachusetts. They want pre-kindergarten and they want ki all-day kindergarten. That became a second part of this. And they wanted that funded. Not partially funded, fully funded by the state. They really put the state on notice for all of this stuff and playing with the formula not to give, it, to give us uh, money, not to give us the correct amount of money that we need to run the school system. So I thought that was uh, 
pretty cool. Uh, we talked. We also approved a resolution number seven: poverty and children. We need to have more funds made available to help our uh, students that are um, free and reduced lunch lunches, especially in urban districts. Okay. Now this is a little bit. Uh, and you got to forgive me for this because uh, resolution number eight was uh, access to minstrel supplies. Access to minstrel supplies. So everybody looked at this and somebody stood up and the person that had this resolution, it was submitted by the MASC committee. And they said that was not the MASC committee's language. That was the student's language. So in respect for the, fe the, women, the female students in the school districts, MASC said, leave the wording in. And that's what we did. Passed unanimously. No problem whatsoever. OK, and then finally, and this is near and dear to my heart, charter school reform. Everybody stood up, screamed, hollered, cheered, and said, let's get them out of the system. So that was what. Um, the, so that's what this was. Uh, that's the delegate manual. So whoever you appoint as the delegate for next year really needs to go and do that. And then have the conversation with you as the school committee before they head down there so we can get, so that we can possibly sponsor a resolution or an addendum to the resolution. Okay, so that was, uh, and the meeting was the conference for me, and this is the fifth time I've been a delegate to that to that meeting was incredible. So on one other personal note, I was approached by the MASC to become a lifetime member of the MASC. And so I thought that there was a restriction, like you had to serve eight years or 10 years or whatever. And they said, no, it's not. You need to get a recommendation or a nomination from the school committee or a member, a member of the school committee. And so I would like to do that because I would really like to represent Brockton at that level. Okay, the other thing too is, and I get to go to the meetings for free, so we don't have to pay for me to go to the meetings, but it would give me the, uh, and us an opportunity to be at the executive level of the MASC. And I can get in there and fight for whatever we need to do for the Brockton Public Schools. So. Uh, uh, that's my report, and I'm sticking to it. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I will write up a big write-up about that later on so I can share it with uh, everybody. But I wanted to thank Joyce, and I wanted to thank Mark for being down there. And then uh, Tim was there, but he had dog-sitting problems, so he had to get back, and then he came back down again and came back again. So, and Tim and I got a chance to, to speak, but we had uh, got a chance to really uh, talk to Joyce and to Mark, and I'm going to miss this big time because I'm done in December. So, uh, but I in, wanted to shout, give a shout out to these two guys for hanging in there with us. So, that's my report. Things we learned at the transportation workshop was that 80, 88% of districts only get one bid for their transportation. Yep. One, 88% of the district. That's Hence why the, the prices are so. That ridiculous with, yeah. with busing and transportation. Hence that resolution exactly. to open that up. Yep. Yep. And also I have to thank uh, Miss Azak for mm -hmm. giving me her velvet cheesecake at, at lunch. I, had, I was able to eat an extra dessert. So yeah, that, that, was, that was actually and very nice as well. And and that to you guys. There's a form I'll work with Melinda on that form. Go ahead, Miss wonderful workshop. Um, the mass conference was wonderful. We were able to attend so many workshops and the, presenta the presentation with um, Dr. Gay, he just, we, when, when I left there, I, I, you think differently and it's just his approach and I remember, you know, I screenshot this and it said diversity. Different individuals valuing each other regardless of skin, intellect, talent, or years. And he just had so many different mm. exercises. Um, you know, it wasn't boring. He, if, if there's a yeah. way we can get him to come to Brockton, yeah. it would be amazing. Um, because, I, you know, now I follow him on Facebook, and he's just all over the place presenting. Um, I also had another opportunity to attend a workshop. I've already spoken to super, uh, Interim Superintendent Thomas. Um, and we actually met Miss Abby. 
Uh, oh. they're, they're pets that come into the classrooms and they're helping students whether they have, you know, IEP shoes mm -hmm. or, um, you know, autism or, or just kids that need someone to, it calms them down. And I know Fitchburg has, um, you know, some of these pets that come and they visit the schools. Therapy pets. Therapy yes. pets. But it's just, you know, whether it's a cat, a turtle, you know, the, Abby the dog is quite famous. She goes to the high schools um, and just listening to all the schools and, and everyone's really just trying to come on board. So, um, you know, they're going to come actually, they're going to come to try to um, attend one of our meetings and give us a little more information, yep. the two presenters that were there. Um, but, you know, just having, having a dog sit there while a kid's reading a book, um, you know, it was just, it was it, listening to the stories. This is something I'd definitely love to see in Brockton. Um, and I'm sure the kids would love it. It calms them down. Um, some of the stories we've heard. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you take a tough kid off and say, hey, hey, Abby, how are you? Um, so it just, it, it changes their whole um, attitude of the day, I guess, when they see the, the, the pets walking around or the therapy dogs or cats. Um, so definitely that would be something we can work on. We can definitely use them at City Hall. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, you can have them. As long as they're licensed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got just just two more things I want to bring up. Uh, uh, the impact Brockton has on the on the MS, uh, MAS uh, on, on the, the the organization and on other school districts. I ran into the chair of the Framingham School Depo uh, School Committee, and uh, we started to talk. And she said to me, uh, and Joyce was there. She said, I can't thank you enough. You saved, you helped save Framingham millions and millions of dollars. They were having a busing problem. And I said that myself, along with uh, our uh, vice chair, Tom Minicello, worked on a three-tier busing plan for Brockton because we went from 72 buses down to 50, 48, I think it was at the time. And we still had to transport all these students. And so we kind of talked to her about this and outlined it. And so she took it back to the Framingham School Committee and School Department, and they adopted the system that we put into place here in Brockton. And she couldn't thank us enough for the amount of money that we actually saved them. So Brockton has an impact in the state. What we do, people sit around and listen. So I think we need to be more and more involved in that. And then the last thing I want to say is Michael asked me to go to the Dedham meeting. And so, uh, Kim, this has got no reflection on, on, on the BEA because you guys would never do what to Brockton what the DEA, and I'm not talking about the drug enforcement <laughs> unit, what the DEA in Dedham did to the school committee there. So I went along to this meeting, and it was, uh, and, and, and they were crying they were crying in their beer, you know, and, and, and come to find out, it wasn't about money because they, the, the, the school department and the, uh, and the school committee offered them a good salary. I think it was 12% over three years or something like that. It wasn't that. I don't know what it was about, but they had this sort of evilness about them and directing it at the, at the school committee. And so when Mike asked me to go along, I said, well, you know, how crazy could this be? Well, you have no idea how crazy it was. So, and you get a chance to get up and talk to them. So I was, I, I was stood there and, and I was listening to them and finally I had to get up at the microphone. So I got up at the microphone and I said, I, yeah, I, I, I don't believe you guys. You know what I'm hearing here? You're crying in your beer. What that DEA did to you guys was they defined you in rapid fire succession and you, and I said this, and you didn't have enough intestinal fortitude, I wanted to say something else, enough intestinal fortitude to fight back. You let them define you and they took you to the cleaners over really nothing, okay? Because you didn't fight back, they defined you. And I said, you should have a relationship. And this goes to, Kim, this goes to you guys. I said, you should have the relationship that we have at the Brockton Public Schools with the BEA. We don't agree on everything, but we don't beat the crap out of each other. But that's what happened, Michael. So I got to tell you, it, you know, and they were shell-shocked. I think they were suffering from PTSD. I think half of the school committee was in therapy. 
I mean, they had, they had, they had intervention dogs. They took that dog that you went to, that went, and they worked with the school committee. It was unbelievable, but it was their fault. They let it happen. And it was interesting because Kevin Bresnahan was in the, was in the, uh, you know, was on the panel. And I said, and we worked with Kevin Bresnahan on non-certified contracts. And we ne would never let that happen. And we had really good opportunities, but we never let anybody define who you are. And that's what the big problem was there for Dedham. So that's the big mistake that they make. So Michael, uh, my report is don't listen to anything that happened into Dedham. It doesn't apply to anything. In fact, they did a tele new television movie about it. It's called Evil. Okay, and that's exactly what happened. So, uh, and that's enough. Enough for me. I'm going to shut up now. But Kim, no reflection. I know it's okay. taped. I don't care. It's <laughs> the minute show. What are you going to do? Fire me up? Even in December? <laughs> I'm not up for re-election. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm tired. Just be next to Mr. Bath. Even time you go to bed, five minutes. Yeah, as soon as I leave here, I'm sleeping in my car. I got to brought a heater. Um, very briefly, uh, I would like to make a quick motion that um, the school committee support whatever necessary um, paperwork and/or uh, cooperation the district needs to show uh, Mr. Bath to have him represent us in the future as a um, lifelong member of uh, MASC, because obviously no one can do it better than Professor Bath. Jeez, uh, I'm tired just from that little bit. Well, so you should have been there. Yeah. Is, is that any well, part of That's a motion, that's please. Yep. Yep. Later <laughs> and then Mark fell asleep in the chair while we were talking. I bet. That's, a, that's in the form of a motion. Could someone maybe... Yeah, could uh, motion has been properly... Any discussion on the motion? No motion discussion. Motion has been properly made in second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Mr. Bath? Thank you very much. Thank Congratulations. You. I appreciate it. I never stray far from the Brockton school system. Awesome. Never. Anyone else? Oh, go ahead. I just, I just have one last um, few business. Um, <coughs> so next week, uh, we will be picking up some of the coats, winter coats. They're brand new winter coats, hats and gloves with cradles to crayon. So they've given us about 370 some odd um, coats to help our Brockton Public Schools. Um, you know, we have a lot of families that um, need this assistance. So feel free to reach out to me. You can always reach out to me through the school department. My information's online. Um, but if, if you're in need and you need a jacket and you have, you know, money's tight, that's what they're there for. So I'd rather see kids that need them get them. Um, all our schools will have access to them. But again, it's gonna be first come, first serve. So I'm limited with the supplies that we have. Um, and these will be available starting, I believe, mid next week. So I believe they're gonna go into on Tuesday, I believe, and they're gonna pick them up for me. Um, so if you need them, reach out to your principals, let them know, they know how to reach out to me, and we will get you um, some nice warm winter jackets, especially with the cold weather the next few days. Um, I tried to deliver some, some of the leftover ones that we had I stopped at a couple of schools today, so I still have a few extras. If we have the right sizes, we'd be more than happy to get them to you. Um, so thank you. But shout out to Cradles to Crayons again for coming through and helping out Brockton with 370 some odd brand new winter jackets, hats, and gloves. Mr. D'Agostino. I'll be quick. Um, I just wanted to again take a minute to um, congratulate the kids at the Kennedy School for the great work they did for STEM Week. Um, and, um, you know, as a, um, yeah, of course, I'm always proud of all the wonderful kids in our district. Um, but as a former Kennedy kid, my, both myself and my younger sister, um, I'm, I'm always going to have a, a fondness for Kennedy. And, and, and I, I take great <coughs> pride in being a former Kennedy kid and representing Kennedy families. And, uh, you know, congratulations to uh, the teachers and the kids for all the great work they did uh, for STEM Week. Anyone else? Well, I guess it's my turn. Well, I, I am happy to announce that the uh, funding for transportation has been resolved. That you probably read in the papers that we were having some uh, difficulties coming up with some funds to uh, to be able to allow our students to be transported to school for the rest of the year. So that has actually been resolved. 
and it is at the uh, City Council's meeting tonight for their consideration. So uh, hopefully in about a week or two or so, we will be done with this and move along. So all the kids who were planning to uh, stay home during the uh, lack of buses to transport them to school, I got some real sad news for you guys. Uh, you're going to be in school, you're going to be in buses, so enjoy your transportation back to our school system. Uh, on another note, um, we met earlier tonight uh, with the uh, superintendent subcommittee, contract subcommittee, and it was a, uh, a long discussion that focused uh, mainly on the great job that our interim superintendent has been doing in our system. And I'm happy, happy to announce, Mr. Superintendent Interim, that the uh, committee voted unanimously to recommend your name as the next superintendent in this uh, great school system. Uh, I don't think there's a single member in here that did not have something great and positive to say about the work that you've been doing and the work that the uh, that we have uh, uh, the work that we have received from the community, appreciating all that you have done in the in these months that you've been here as the soup. And it's only fair that we bring the uh, Brockton boy back to the Brockton superintendent, superintendent office to, uh, to continue to do the great work that you've been doing. So I think we need to do this officially by me asking for a motion that we accept the recommendation of that subcommittee so that at least it's on record. Um, to favorably uh, recommend their recommendation to the committee that gets, actually gets to negotiate the, committee, the uh, contract now, correct? We, um, thank you, Mayor Rodriguez, uh, for A, supporting the school system and supporting the um, school committee in, in unanimously having faith in Interim Superintendent Thomas, um, and also uh, assisting in making sure that our children have busing. Um, uh, Mayor Rodriguez has always been a supporter, huge supporter of the schools, and we always have faith that he will do the right thing, and he always does, come to support, uh, comes through for our kids. Um, we, the school committee met earlier, and we made a recommendation to move forward and open negotiations for the uh, permanent position of superintendent of schools um, and remove the term interim uh, from uh, Su Superintendent Interim Thomas's title. So we have favorably moved to enter into negotiations. So we are looking forward to um, having discussions with both the school committee and uh, Superintendent Thomas to hopefully come to a resolution and an accord where he uh, will accept the position and we can negotiate a fair uh, contract uh, for the district and uh, provide this district with leadership for the uh, near future uh, and for hopefully a number of years because we feel confident. Um, I think Mayor Rodriguez put it um, quite uh, accurate that you know the community has a lot of faith in Mr. Thomas, City Hall has a lot of faith in the school district and this committee. So we, um, we are proud to move forward with um, attempting and hopefully successfully to enter into a fair contract that both sides will feel is reasonable going forward. So we will, ke we will keep you, the public, informed as to next steps. So we have scheduled, we are going to be scheduling a next step, a, um, another superintendent contract subcommittee <laughs> meeting, and hopefully we will iron out the details and have some good information to report. Great. The mayor is on top of it as usual. There you go. So. Good news going forward, and hopefully we will have the cherry on the Sunday soon. Yeah, I think we were basically we're basically looking yeah. for stability in, into our system because I think it's important to send a message to everyone, both in the school system and also also outside of the school system, that we have a stable organization. I think that's also very very important and key to us moving forward with this. And I am uh, one million percent sure that, and besides I have your signature right here, that you are going to continue to do an awesome job for this community for years and years and years to come. So can we have that in the form of a motion yes. so that it's officially on record? So it, uh, that is the report and uh, 
Um, there is a motion that I'll make that we ratify the decision earlier to tonight by the superintendent uh, subcommittee, contract subcommittee, to enter into negotiations with superintendent, with interim superintendent Thomas, regarding making him the permanent superintendent of exactly. schools going forward. Mr. Beth. A motion has been properly made and second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Unanimous again, sir. Congratulations. Again, again I don't want to say too much because I'll end up breaking down, but I appreciate your support. And I'm humbled, obviously, as a just a kid from the east side um, who was born and raised, and this is my 27th year in the school system that I love um, and I've dedicated my career to. So. Um, and the people I work with every day, my executive team, principals, um, Kim Gibson with the DA, she and I spend a lot of time together. Um, and my focus has always been on the teachers and staff that work directly with our students, uh, who do the hardest, toughest work every day. Um, and I try to get out to the schools as much as I can to make sure that um, the teachers, the parents, the MTAs, um, our lunch personnel and custodians understand how important their jobs are um, and there's no more important people than the people that work with our kids directly every day. And it's my job to support them as best I can as superintendent and also uh, listen to our families and support our families um, that, um, and just to make sure their kids are safe and a safe learning in a safe environment, number one, uh, and supported. Um, and again, my motto when I started the school year is uh, work hard and be nice to people. Um, that's what you know. I try to do every day, um, but I'm humbled, and I really am honored. And um, I thank you for your support. Uh, you're a great group to work with, Mayor. I appreciate your support and the support of uh, the City Council as well. Um, but you, the school committee and I, we've all worked together closely for a long time, um, and I really appreciate your support. And, and I really don't much, much else to say, but thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Well deserved. Thank you. Congratulations, man. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Whew. Uh, do we have anything else? Any other business for the good of the people in our city? I would like to entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor of going home? All those opposed? We shall go home. Thank you.